Government Internals Advocate at the first television interview with the new Foreign Secretary, Nirupa Mara. Foreign Secretary, let's start with Pakistan. Two Fedayeen attacks in Kashmir within 24 hours, rocket attacks at Atari and Punch, frequent firing across the international border, and all of this within the space of a week. How do you view these developments? With great concern, Karan. Terrorism, and you know the whole phenomenon of cross-border terrorism, as it affects us today, hasn't diminished in any manner. And all the events you've seen over the last few days basically point to the basic and undeniable fact that uh, the infrastructure of terrorism, which operates out of Pakistan and territory under Pakistan control, has not been dismantled. And it continues to be directed against the Indian people. It affects ordinary people. Terrorism affects people like you and me. The recent terrorist attack at Lal Chowk in Srinagar was clearly masterminded by handlers in Pakistan. Do you have any idea who they are? Are they the Harpukul Mujahideen, as the press suggests, or could they be the lashkar e toiba who were responsible for 26-11 in Mumbai? Well, uh, all I'd like to say, Karan, is that uh, whichever group they may belong to, they are essentially part of the same species. These are terrorism spewing, violence generating people uh, who have an agenda, an agenda of violence and mayhem to pursue. And these are clearly therefore people operating out of Pakistan? Obviously. Do you believe that they have some form of assistance or support from the Pakistani establishment or state? Well, let me put it this way. I think the experience over the last two decades would make it very clear to us that this has been an instrument of state policy which has been pursued by agencies within Pakistan. And that is clearly the case in what happened in Kashmir the other day as well. We have very little or no evidence to suggest otherwise. Now the telephone intercepts have the Pakistani handlers making it absolutely clear that they're seeking to revive violence and militancy in Kashmir. This happened days after President Zardari committed his own government to fulfilling his father-in-law Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto's pledge for a thousand-year war to liberate Kashmir. Are the two linked? Well, militancy and violence in Kashmir is a long-standing phenomenon. We have seen it happen over and over again for many, many years now. And this has been accompanied by rhetoric, rhetoric directed against India, uh, all forms and uh, means of propaganda that comes across from the Pakistan side. So rhetoric, militancy, and violence, together they make a very combustible combination. And President Zazari's rhetoric is a facilitating or encouraging factor behind the sort of terrorism we witnessed. Let me say that rhetoric hardly helps the situation. It poisons people's minds. And clearly President Zardari's rhetoric has been unhelpful. It's been poisonous. Rhetoric is always unhelpful in situations such as these. Many analysts believe that as President Obama's AFPAC strategy starts to put pressure on the Taliban and Al-Qaeda in the West, they will seek to deflect attention by carrying out terrorist attacks on India in the East. Is that now starting to happen? The AFPAC strategy announced by President Obama in December, the details of it, that is, is directed against terrorism in our region. It seeks to eliminate the sources of terrorism in Pakistan. It is also focused on the sources of terrorism which operates out of areas contiguous to Afghanistan. Having said that, I would also say that the United States has been sensitized to our concerns about terrorism that operates from areas contiguous to our border with Pakistan against our people. And I believe the U.S. is sensitive to these concerns. Absolutely. But let's leave the U.S. sensitivity aside. We can come to that later. Do you also feel that as U.S. pressure on the Taliban and Al-Qaeda increases, they might be tempted to deflect attention by carrying out terrorist attacks on India and the East? Well, Karan, I would uh, respond to that by saying that Eternal vigilance is the price that we have to pay in all these situations. And we have to be constantly alert to this possibility. Let's broaden our discussion a little. 
Amidst persistent political turmoil and relentless terror, how worried are you about the internal political situation in Pakistan? Terrorism and violence within Pakistan, and you've seen a rise in levels of both terrorism and violence within Pakistan, clearly reverberates beyond Pakistan's borders. We've said over and over again that we would like a secure, a stable, a peaceful Pakistan. Obviously, violence and terrorism in Pakistan and uh, manifestations of what you refer to as instability concern all of us. So as Pakistan begins to appear to collapse under its internal problems, India becomes threatened as well. I'm not going to make any prognosis on that. I think that uh, really is not part of my brief. But as I said, we would obviously, we are close neighbors of Pakistan. And affected. We would naturally be concerned about instability or terror, rise in levels of terrorism and increased violence within that country. Now in November in Washington, the Prime Minister said, and I quote him, I don't know who to deal with in Pakistan. This was in the interview he gave CNN. Does this mean that you don't believe the President of the Dari's civilian government are the right people to talk to? We deal with the government of Pakistan. Obviously, we have a relationship, a diplomatic relationship with Pakistan. We are in touch with representatives of the Pakistan government for whatever reason. Over and over again, we uh, are in contact. Uh, there are issues, humanitarian issues that exist between the two countries. So that relationship continues to be transacted. The levels of dialogue obviously are much diminished after the Mumbai attacks.